I am so excited for this next piece here. And everybody's really in for real cheap. Um, the person that I have the honor of bringing up here uh, to help close out our first day here at Australia New Zealand celebration is an extremely special woman in my life. That's for sure. I first met her in 2012. Um, she actually describes that, you know, uh, she had just come from like a seven day bender in Germany and she showed up at celebration in Phoenix and we met for the first time and, you know, connected for literally five minutes. Didn't think much of it, but her light bulb switched on at that event in Phoenix back in 2012. It was our 10 year anniversary event. And I watched her ignite this country of Australia and really enroll people into a vision that they couldn't really see for themselves, but they wanted to be a part of it. Because she is a magnet. And it was all about living your ideal day and living your ideal life. And uh, over the course of the next few years, she became one of our youngest isogenic millionaires at the age of 26 years of age. And a couple of years after her first event in 2012, she um, was on stage at our 2014 celebration event in San Diego. And she did a piece called What Excites You. How many of you ever watched that piece? And let me tell you, it changed this company. And I remember sitting there in the audience and I said to myself, I am so marrying you. <laughs> and, um, you know, we, we developed an incredible friendship uh, over the course of the, the next few years, but <laughs> it, then it just became like, I just, you know, we've got to do this thing. So, um, <laughs> now your minds are in the gutters. But she, um, she has such a gift. And uh, recently, she just wrote her first book called First is Hiring. And it's like nothing I've ever read before. She just has done two book tour events across Australia. We got four more to go. Um, the book's going, doing so well. And uh, I'm just so proud of everything that she's accomplishing. And I'm just so grateful every single day. And I'm just in disbelief that I have the honor of being her husband and supporting her on her journey. And uh, she is just changing the planet. And I'm just so so proud to be your husband. And um, and you know, I always wanted to, uh, you know, have a wife that would be just a remarkable example to uh, my kids. And I can't think of a better example um, for little soul than Peter. And um, she was actually just recognized recently by Inc. Magazine as one of the top 10 female entrepreneurs changing the planet. And it's just been so special to watch what she's created and what she's going to continue to create for generations to come. And so I'd like you to get on your feet and please help me welcome to the stage my wife, the love of my life. Give it up for Peta Kelly Kuba! Every single time, no matter how many times we speak, like 
Mm-hmm. This is nerve wracking, I think, because it's such a responsibility to me to get to share it in front of you. And I've had such an honor to get to do it six years in a row. And I really am so honored and privileged and grateful that you listen to me and my ever changing accent. Um, and I actually said to Steve this year, I don't think I need to speak this year. Like, you know, they've heard from me so many times. You really think they need to hear me again. Like, I'm doing my book tour. And, and he was like, you have to speak. And it's not like you have to speak because you're so great. It's it's that I have a seat in isogenics and I get to see things from a point of view that nobody else does. And so it's like an obligation for me to get to share with you from where I get to see so that you can just know truly how special this is. So I said to him, okay, I'll do it, but can I just sit on a stool and just talk from my heart and not do like this big profound keynote or anything? I just want to sit and talk to my people and update them on and just just feel them out and just serve them and whatever's going to come out today I have no idea but um, I just feel a real responsibility because I do get to see us from such a special point of view and I have had a journey that no one else in isogenics is ever going to have unless Eric gets a few more wives <laughs> and I do feel such a deep genuine care for this market like you wouldn't believe and you don't know this but I work pretty much full time for you for this market for this company like no one in the office will ever come to me and tell me about a product they're launching in America because my first question is when's it launching in Australia and New Zealand and if they don't have an answer for me I'm like I don't really care about it like what are you launching here? So when we launch Harvest Pins, like the first here, it's like, yes, you know, and I'm just, I'm just kidding, but you know what I mean? Like I'm like going in for, to bat for you guys, like all the time, like <laughs> to, to the point where it's like annoying. Like everyone's like, what's your role in isogenics? And I'm like, what's your body? Like, no, all these different things. Um, chief nag for the vegans and the Aussies. I don't know, like whatever, just a nag. Um, so I just want to share a little bit about of my story, if that's okay. Um, before I go on, how amazing was Bora and Zach? Yeah. I'm so grateful for you both coming. Like, Laura, you are so elegant and graceful. I just love you when you can talk. It's just that person. And Zach, you're just amazing and brilliant. And you know that. And thank you. And I just, no, no, but I've told him a million times. I also... The haka, I just have to say, like, every single time, there is nothing on this planet that moves me more than that. Like, seriously. Oh. Just the welcome to country and that is just what moves my soul more than anything. And we are on very sacred land here and we are living in a very sacred part of the world. So that that's just... That like just makes my year every time I see that heart just works me and now now it's for just for the for that. Oh. So here's a picture. <laughs> put the put the uh, picture on please. <laughs> yeah, this one. This was in 2013 at the the Gold Coast celebration. And I was like fresh, I was like two star or something. I just got off a Fly in the morning from Perth. Uh, I think I got that outfit from Dottie. Um, uh, true star. I mean, you know, I'm going to do it. And Eric and I met, and everybody kept saying, You and Eric are going to get married. And I was like, How on earth am I going to get married to Eric? They live in the desert. Like, how is that going to work? Like, there's no beach there. It's impossible. And everybody kept saying, and at the parties, everyone was kind of like, Eric, are you going to marry Peter? Peter, are you going to marry Eric? And I actually taught him to do his first ever selfie at that event. And that's why I think he felt so in debt to me that he married me. Because I pretty much gave him the greatest skill of his life. <laughs> but this was hilarious because every time I look at this photo, he's like, look at my stats. Like, I was trying to be, like, super cool in that pic. And I just have no idea what I'm doing. But now we're married. <laughs> Five years on. Um, and at that event, too, Jono and I did a piece. And I look back and it's just hilarious. We did an athlete's piece together because we didn't really have many people in our group. So it was like slim picking. So somehow John and I were doing an athlete's piece. It was just hilarious. 
because we just had no idea what we were doing. And my husband, uh, Eric, he was like, that was so great. I was like, was it, was it I? I don't even know if it was really great, but I just love looking back on my isogenics journey so much. And as I mature and evolve, my appreciation for this company only grows. And no matter what direction life's taken me and all the things I've learned and all the other things I've been called to create, I think what I really want to get across today is just how special this company is and just how lucky we all are. And no matter what you want to do in your life and other things, like I've got lots of things that want to be born through me, but isogenics is always the epicenter of my life. And I'm just so grateful to be a part of it. And, you know, I have had to continually reassess my relationship with us because getting married to Eric and moving to the USA, like I was like, who am I in this company anymore? You know what I mean? Like I was up in the field, I was on wellness Wednesdays, I was building here. And then I got married to Eric and then everybody was like, are you going to be Kathy Cooper? And I was like, how can I be Kathy Cooper? I don't even own shoes. It's not possible. <laughs> Kathy has like 45,000 pairs of shoes. I have none. <laughs> I don't have a spare one. I have a couple of shoes. But there was like so many hats I was trying to balance. I was like, what? <laughs> what happened? Oh, they. <laughs> I'm like, what happened to my school? But I was trying to balance all these different hats within isogenics and also trying to evolve as a, as a woman. You know, I was a young woman trying to evolve. And I was trying to move to America, which was incredibly challenging for me. I was trying to support Eric as his wife. I was trying to work out where I fit in this company. Like I cared so deeply, but I was just like, who am I in this company? And, and I was just figuring it out. And I think that's what I love most about looking back on my isogenics journey with this market and looking at Fred and Sammy and Jenna Jones, Devin Ari and Jackson, you know, cool, like, come and come just how much we had to figure it out together and we had so many clashes and so many times where I, I look back and I was just like I but we were just evolving but we were we were evolving and doing our very best with what we had together you know and I look back and I'm like wow I'm so glad like we grew up but it's I just love how much we all cared so much about this company and this company so I just look back with like just so much joy and appreciation for how we've matured and I just invite you all to just honor every part of our evolution and not look at any of it with anything other than appreciation and I was thinking like what am I going to say when I'm first with the stage which is crazy because you can't for me I'm like I can't plan because I get out here and I see faces and I'm like oh, I'm not sure, I'm not but I wanted to just get you to close your eyes and I just want to do that now just close your eyes just for a second and I just want you to to think about what your life was like before you even knew there was an ice Like just think about what you thought your future was going to be like. Like how were you feeling every single day? And I think, again, you can open your eyes and I'm going to get all the people down there, but I think that's so important because as we evolve as a market, as we evolve as people, as we get all these other opportunities to be this coach or this mentor, do this and this and this, write this book, it's so easy to. It's not lucky. It's really blinding. But nothing can grow from any other place other than a deep appreciation. You cannot do anything good in life if it's not from a foundation of deep appreciation. And, you know, when we talk about appreciating assets, a house is an appreciating asset, the word appreciate means to grow. So I prefer that word to gratitude because when we appreciate something, it grows. And unless you are truly appreciating this company and truly appreciating your isogenics business and your isogenics journey, it won't grow. And so that is going to be the foundation of everything we do here is appreciation. And it doesn't matter. Like, there's going to be people in this room where you're going to get asked to do all these different things in your life. Like, like I said, I've been called to create and serve in other ways, but my appreciation for isogenics is all of that. I stayed home with soul. You know, I, I can afford like any probiotic cultured organic coconut yogurt that you get in Ponda, which is like $45,000 for a little time. <laughs> but I can literally live and nourish my well-being unencumbered 
because of this company. I could write my book and self-publish it, which costs a lot of money, and print it on sustainable paper and express ship it on a plane to Australia out of my own pocket so that it could be at my tour so that people wouldn't have to ship it and just fully cop that cost myself with no ex expectation from my, my people to cover because of isogenics. I, it's just like I my brother and I retired my mom who can now like fly to the US and take care of soul for us and have that special time. She wouldn't have been able to have that if it wasn't for isogenics. I got to literally, people, the last three years of my life, create events, build programs, and serve my generation without taking a single cent for myself because of isogenics. And I think sometimes, and we all got to get really real here, like life is going to offer us a lot of things, and we can so easily get caught in, well, I don't like this person in isogenics, and, you know, well, just all these crappy, non-rewarding stories about, well, that person's doing this, and that person should do this better, and all this thing that is really distracting us from this appreciation that we should have. And sometimes it's just pure ego. Sometimes we think we're bigger than network marketing. We think we're bigger than isogenics. We think we're bigger than the community that grew us. And we've just always got to come back to that deep appreciation for what for the fact that this company has got our back more than probably anything else ever will in our entire life. And if you think about how isogenics has nourished you over your life, think about has it ever let you down? Has it ever let your family down? Think about your your toughest times are you been in isogenics? Think about your highest times when you've been in isogenics. Has isogenics ever stopped nourishing you and your family? And if so, was it isogenics problem or was it yours? And I just want to give everyone like a big reality check here. If you are not functioning from the deepest, most sincere appreciation for this company, something's amiss because this company is the most pure, loving, compassionate, generous entity that I've ever known in my life has never stopped nourishing my life. Even as I've gone and evolved and grown up and matured and dabbled over here and done this and gone here and figured myself and actually had to take a breather from my strategy for a little while because I was so overwhelmed at what everybody wanted me to be. And it still nourished my family, still took care of my family, still nourished my body, still nourished my audience, still allowed me to create, never stopped nourishing me. And yet so many, again, and I just want to get so real here, guys, because it's just, we can know all the how-to and all of this stuff, but our energy is 100% what is dictating the success of our business. And a lot of the time, we forget where we came from. And that a lot of the time we like to blame things, or well, if corporate only did this, or if this only happened, or my blender only worked at a different wattage, or if this and if this flavor came out, and if that flavor came out, then my isogenics journey would be different. And it's just not the case. Isogenics is, and again, we all go through the crap, guys. Isogenics is growing and maturing as well. Nothing's perfect. But a lot of the time we, all, we think that it's, it's people's fault, it's our plant's fault. It's always us. Everything in our life is us. So I want to encourage you when you leave here, if you've got gifts with people, if you've got any anything that you are letting distract your energy from being in the appreciation and the enjoyment of this opportunity, then let it go. And take radical responsibility for your own energy. Because like I said, you can know how to build this business. You can be the greatest network marketer in the world on paper. But if your energy is not instructing your life in a business in a rewarding way, you're not going to have a successful business. Everything is energy. Everything. And you can probably sense in your own life when your business has stopped, when it's grown, when it's felt easy, when it's felt hard. It's all completely in response to your energy and how you are living your life. And I cannot stress enough that a deep appreciation is at the core of that. Isogenics doesn't have to be here. But it is serving you, nourishing you relentlessly, like relentlessly, all the time, no matter what you're going through as a human being, this company's there. And so that's got to be where we move from. So I've had to realign myself with Einstein several times. Who I was when I started is not who I am right now. How I, obviously now I have a different role in Einstein I work with isogenics at a different level, like with the entire company now. 
But I've had to constantly realign how have I evolved and what does isogenics mean to me now? And that's what I want to invite you to do. Everybody's evolved, right? How does isogenics fit into your life now? What does it mean to you now? Like I have people who say to me, well, I'm just not really like an ant kind of person. I'm like me either. I don't really do ants. I do Pilates and go for walks. Not really much need for me to have ants. My isogenics journey is like what lights me up in it. Well, my job is like, again, it's different. And I'm just going to share to give example. My job is like being a voice for the earth and the new way. And I'm sure like with Eric that we are being such a voice for like consciousness evolution and that exciting stuff which I want to like just blur everywhere but I promise Mac I will not. Um, look at him. Who's that? But I'm always working on exciting stuff for you and for your children. That's my role. And within your isogenics story and your isogenics, like you, you've got to constantly realign. And I've been having conversations with people with isogenics and they just said, well, Peter, I just, I don't know where it fits anymore. I want to be a coach. I want to do retreats. And sometimes you just want to shake them and say, go and do it. But trust me, nothing is going to butter your bread like this is going to butter your bread. Nothing. And I have got a couple of businesses, very successful ones. But this is a very valuable asset that I encourage you to appreciate. And if you want to do retreats and you want to be coaching, you want to do other stuff, do it. But don't ever stop appreciating this asset because I don't know anything more generous, relentlessly generous than this. And trust me, I've been, I've been everywhere since you probably saw me speak. Yeah. Yeah. So what does that mean for you? So I was having a conversation with people before and they're like, well, I'm not really like an ant kind of person. I'm like, well, is it like the eastern parts of isogenics that, and, and again, I want you to think long, well, thinking the Eastern medicine elements of isogenics. So for me, the adaptogens. Did you know that, as Jim shared with me earlier, like some of the ingredients, some of the adaptogens and the ionics are sourced from like a primordial part of Russia? Like for the spiritual sort of people who really care about that stuff, do you know how good that is? Seriously? If you're like finding it hard to re-engage in isogenics, like go on and Research the parts of isogenics that excite you, the cleansing herbs, the aloe vera leaf gel, like the shilajit, ashwagandha. But we live in Bondi some of the year, and it's like the highest standard of health of anywhere I've ever been in my life. And I've got friends there, like, and they're like, well, we put adaptogens in our coffee. I'm like, we've been doing adaptogens for like 16 years. Like, and they're like, we had no idea isogenics did adaptogens. It's because a lot of the time you feel like you have to be sharing isogenics the same as everyone else. But realigning with isogenics is about which parts of isogenics get you the most lit up. For me, it's not ants. I'm just going just gonna to be straight up about it. For my brother, for Eric, they love ants. Eric has ants mantra, they have ants fuel. I wouldn't even taste it because I would be like, it's not a good workout, it's not really my thing because I'm just going to go to Pilates, not really. But you ask me about the adaptogens, you ask me about the trends, like which part of isogenics is your excitement? Which how do you want to realign with this company so that you can be fully tapping into your life force and your energy and be lit up without trying to care about what everyone else cares about? It's cool if you don't care about some parts of it. It's cool if you don't want to build like your other people build. Where can you realign and take responsibility as an entrepreneur? Entrepreneur, I didn't know how to say that word. As an entrepreneur. How can you take responsibility for realigning with this so it becomes a click for you? Recently, I've been working on some stuff for this company that has clicked me at the biggest. And everything else I'm working on for the world and my mission for the planet in general, it's clicked me in more than anything else. I hardly even sleep right now. Downloading, 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 downloading. But you've got to find that so that you're functioning from like this alignment and this life force and this energy that is irresistible. But a lot of people are trying, like, just. Ask yourself right now, like if you're watching you and you can see your energy right now, is it rewarding? Is it inviting? Is it exciting? Do people want to join it? Is it aligned? Is it vibrant? And this is why you, if you've ever been on my social media, you know that alignment, as you read my book, alignment is like everything for me because everything is beautiful and amazing and awesome in alignment. 
And it's because your life force is on. You have access to all resources, all creativity, all ideas. But it's your responsibility to get aligned with this company. And if you've been in this company for a little while and you've gone on to do other things, amazing. Because Isogenics wants nothing more than to, to support and nourish your purposes. If you want to write a book, go for it. Isogenics wants to fund that. If you want to go and start some event, do it. Isogenics wants to fund that. You want to go on a most luxurious holiday in the rainforest? Go for it. Isogenics wants to fund that. What is going to make this complete for you? So that you can be in complete alignment with your isogenics journey. There are no kinks in it, which I spoke about last year, so I'm not going to get in there. You're in complete alignment with this. So I have, I can, I have like literally probably 30 ideas of names for launch parties that I would do if I was in this right now. If, like, if you're like spiritual, maybe an idea for a launch party is angel cards and a daffodil. If that's like what lights you up, make something on Canva, angel cards and adaptogens, and invite people over in the park and sit there and talk about that. And don't even talk about ants. But if you love ants, why don't you talk about stuff? I don't even have an ant on the top of my head, but you know what I mean? Like ants and ants, or angel cards and ants. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Find the click for you. Get creative. Get creative. Think and behave like an entrepreneur. Like, really. Because you have got basically like the greatest privilege under the hat of an entrepreneur ever. You don't have the risk. You don't have the legal. Like, the stuff that Jim and Kathy have to do. Like, sometimes, and we're having conversations about the things they have to make. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I wish everybody could be in this room right now. Because this is hectic what they have to do on behalf of all of us. The choices they have to make, you know, it's so big. And yet you get the joyful, fun, privilege to roll in this company. Find where it clicks. Exactly. Find, find where it clicks for you. What does this company mean to you in your heart? Like what does your circle want to talk about when it comes to isogenics? Find the click on how to talk about these products and this business and what it means for your greater mission. Find your click and go from there. And don't worry about the legal. Don't worry. I mean, compliance, yes, very important. <laughs> but I'm talking about, like, you don't have to get a legal team, which if you've ever run a conventional business, is a big pain in the butt, right? Find your click and go out and behave like an entrepreneur. And I want to address something. So when we were growing really massively, you know, I know for me, I was seeing a lot of people share the products non compliant There was a couple of scares. So there was a, a time where we were like, maybe this shouldn't be like independent joint parties, right? We were just doing our best to protect the company because it was growing so fast. Some people were talking about different products in a way that was like scary compliantly. So we were really working to get like such standardized things. And then some things happened with other companies where they got shut down. Compliant. I think people got a little scared you know, like it was a bit stiff because we're maturing and we're figuring it out and that's just what happened. But now that everybody knows how to be compliant, and now everybody knows how to protect this company, get creative again. Like get your entrepreneur hat on. Find how this click for you. Fully click in with this company and how it fits in with your mission. Because this is a billion dollar and growing, beautiful, compassionate, conscious entity that wants to support your mission. So click in with I call it, click in and let her nourish your life. But you have to think like an entrepreneur. You have to get creative. Like angel cards and adaptogens, literally that's just one. I've got like 30. I'll probably just you can have it, whatever. But I want to challenge you. Like how can you get more creative with your business? Because your energy is you can have the best list. You can be writing Zach's script. But even if you text someone Zach's script and you want to the energy, they're going to receive that energy. That sounds good. That's just true. So be an entrepreneur and have fun. Get creative again. Like how can this be fun? And on that topic of being behaving like an entrepreneur, invest money into your business. So last year when Eric and I were, we just had soul and she was three weeks old, so we didn't go to the Vegas celebration. And um, the, the live stream was free for the first bit, and then it was $99. And we watched it go from 17,000 viewers 
to like 700 viewers. 700 people were willing to pay $99 for Tony Robbins. There's something really wrong with that in the thinking of people who are trying to build a big enterprise. You're not thinking like an entrepreneur if you're not willing to invest $99 to watch three days of like the highest level training that you can. So when I saw that, when Eric and I saw that, we were like 700, 17,000 people watched it for free, but only 700 were willing to pay $99 wow, wow. to invest $99, to circulate $99 so that it could generate something crazy for the business. There's a real defunct in terms of people's money making here. And I've always believed, ever since I started Astrogenics, ever since, you know, because I came from a PhD scholarship, guys, $500 a week PhD scholarship. I was a Subway sandwich artist, right? Which, by the way, $21 an hour 10 years ago, which is pretty amazing. I worked at Brumby's for $5.15 an hour, right? but I still always knew when I got out of my PhD scholarship, and I moved into this, that Isogenics pays us so generously. And in Australia, we didn't have the humongous bonus pools. You guys know, we didn't have the huge bonus pools. We had the compensation plan. We didn't have the present plan, we started, right? We were like, they're gone. But the compensation plan on its own was so remarkable that I, I knew that there was like fine print, take some of this money and reinvest it. That's just a given. So I always had an account that was filled with my income, like parts of my income that was going back into people. Buying them books, buying them event tickets, little in, like incentives, like you know, trips and things like that, helping people get to events. I always knew that in order to grow my business, like, and if I was getting paid this abundantly, and if I didn't have this overhead, what would any smart business person do? I would invest it back in. So I want you to switch your thinking to being from just network marketing professional, which you are, to also very privileged entrepreneur, and combine them. So have, have put some of your income aside and invest it back. If your people can't make it to the, the national event in the middle of the year, look at them in the eye and say, a 99% investment for live stream is a no -brainer. And if they really can't afford it, then you for them. It's just you, you've got to be thinking in terms of circulating and generating, which I'm going to talk about. So I encourage you to do that. Set up an extra account. I don't know if you get like zero fee ones. I don't know, but even if so, it's worth fee, whatever. Set up a separate, separate account and put whatever feels comfortable for you, percentage of your income in it, and use it as an entrepreneur to invest back. It could be in isogenics events, it could be in other events, it could be in books that you give to people who rank events, it could be in things like live stream, but that, that number really, it really shook me. I was like 700, so 17,000 and 700 of these people are willing, are willing to pay $99 for training that's worth tens of thousands. We have to be having conversations that are more entrepreneurial on a higher level if we want to be playing at this game in a big way and we want to be taken seriously as entrepreneurs as well as professional network marketers. So for me, I said to Eric, I've been talking about money and I saw the yeah, thing yeah, in, yeah. in my pay, I, like I can't really resist the urge to talk like about energy and business. Mm -hmm. It's just a thing, but I spoke a little bit about money and in my book I speak about it all the time, but I want to talk about your money story here for a little bit because it really matters, guys. And part of getting aligned with isogenics and getting aligned with what network marketing means for you, getting aligned with how this is going to support whatever it else that you want to create in your life, how your family wants to live. Because anyway, you've got to be aligned with what money means to you. And sometimes when you're looking at the stage and you're watching people earning big amounts of money, and you say, I want to be a millionaire, sometimes in all honesty, you don't want to be in your soul. Sometimes your soul is just like, I just want a thousand dollars extra month. Can we just focus there? And yet you're getting totally misaligned because you're trying to borrow other people's money goals in a way that is totally not even fitting with your soul. And then there's other people who are going for small money goals and their soul is like, no, you want to repay a month, you want to build this money, you want to do this, you want to do that. So your money story is actually not in alignment because it's true limited so this is all about getting your money story 
and how you view money to be in a click again in alignment with how you want to see your life. So for me, when I so I felt like I mean I was like 23 or something when I started to build we're doing wellness Wednesday and everything, and my income was like this, and I was like being thrust into this leadership, and I was like doing all the personal development I could, and I had to evolve my money to quick smart because I was expanding my income, and because all these young people were looking at me and thought, what does money mean, Peter? And I refused to give them like a greedy, egoic money story. So I was defining my money, so what does that mean to me consciously and in service to others? And obviously I wanted to retire my mom, that was so important to me, and a lot of my money immediately went out and still goes out to not profits and things like that. Um, so I had to evolve my money store, even though a lot of people around me weren't willing to. So there's a lot of people around me when I started to earn a lot of money, I was going to go saying, think, well, you're so greedy, it's all about money. You know, just And all their money stories, where the rich get rich, the poor get poor, and throwing all their money stories into me and like trying to make them mine. But my soul's purpose was to live in abundance so that I could redefine what money meant in a conscious world and to circulate it in big ways on behalf of the earth which is exactly what I do. So I had to ignore all these people who were and some really good friends, you know, all you care about is money. I was like, do you have any idea where my money was going in it? Mm-hmm. But I had to take responsibility for my own money story and not borrow other people's money story. So our story, when I'm talking about story here, yeah, I'm not talking about 30 second story, I'm not talking about the story used to People like that. I'm talking about the story you were telling in your life every day from your body about money. The story that is coming out of your mouth. The story that is emanating from you when you think about money. Because that is literally instructing money on how to work with your Your energetic story. You can be like, well, I know how to invest. I know how to do this and whatever. But if your, your money story in your body is not instructing money reward, it's not going to happen. You have your actions and you have your energy. Both have to be rewarding. If one of them is good, if you're just purely energetic and not doing the work, it's not gonna happen. Like just, yeah, I'm just gonna sit on my butt, be a hippie all day, and just get real. You've got to do both, energy and action. So a lot of the times you will bust out of here and you'll do the work, get on calls, do the work, do the work, do the work. And if your money story is letting you down energetically, I'm sure some of you can feel that, right? You can feel that you have a money story that is not quite or hooked in with your goals. Mm-hmm. And I'm really, really blunt about it. I don't think everybody needs to get rich. I don't think it's rewarding for everybody to get rich. I think sometimes if you're trying to get rich and copy other people's goals, it's actually taking you out of alignment because your soul may really just want a very simple, beautiful life with 5,000 extra a month, 3,000 extra a month, 500 extra a month, and that's your plan and that's where you want to live. But some of you do require large amounts of money, like me, to live in my sole purpose, to build what I wanted to build, to do what I wanted to do for the world, take care of my mom. I required to eat how I want to eat. I mean, seriously, the foods that I eat, like, and I feed salt, like, in one bag, you know how much it costs for this stuff you're talking about? Yeah, in one bag? It's crazy. But it has to be quick food. So, what is the story you're telling about money right now? Like, when you think about money, what's the story you're telling? And here's what I know about stories. So stories are literally your energetic construction. What stories you were telling about network marketing is instructing your network marketing business. So if you've got network marketing stories that are like, and the first thing that comes out of your mouth is network marketing gets such a bad rap. I don't tell that story. Why would I tell that story about network marketing? Why would I let that be my instruction to my business? Well, you're walking around basically with an instruction that says network marketing gets a bad rap. And your life is going to prove that to you. And everywhere you look, you're going to see people who think network marketing gets a bad rap. There are some people, like Kathy, she thinks network marketing is literally the greatest thing on planet Earth. And she only encounters people who think that because her energetic story is that's what's showing up. Life is giving her evidence of her story, right? So you have to, what's your network marketing story? Like, what is it? Like, oh, you know, everybody thinks it's a scam. Everybody thinks it's this. this pyramid and that's literally what your body is telling the world and life's like okay well that's the story i'm literally going to prove that to you right now so what would happen if you told a better story about network marketing network marketing is the business model of the future it's such a conscious 
business model in which we are operating from our human nature and our hearts every day. We are literally sharing things that we love in integrity so that we can create a life that's in alignment with our soul. That's an example. What story would you like to tell about network marketing so that this feels really good for you and so that the world starts responding to you as a network marketer and an entrepreneur differently? And then you've got to do this. So the same thing goes with pregnancy. Like, and I know Sammy will agree with me here. When you get pregnant, there's a lot of people want to throw their story on you about, um, and everybody has their own story. There's no right or wrong. Some people do not really have it. You know what I mean? But when, when I was pregnant, when I was about to give birth, I had to be very mindful not to borrow other people's story because everybody was telling me, you have enough, you know, you have enough home birth? Like, but towards the end, actually, you know what he did? Because my story was money private. I don't know. At the beginning, mm-hmm. having a home birth, I remember calling the doctor in the US, the woman in the US, then to book in like a scan. And I was like, I'm pregnant. I'm so excited. I'm pregnant. And literally, the first seven doctors I called said, call me back when you've missed me. Like, call me back in seven weeks because most pregnancies. And it straight away went into the fear. And I, I know, I'm very clear on it. On all the very sad stuff that happens in my life, so I've experienced it very clearly in my life. But it wasn't the story I wanted to carry on with my pregnancy. My pregnancy story was I never felt healthy in my life. I was thriving, my baby was thriving. I was going to have the healthiest, chubbiest vegan baby. That was my story, and I got her. But my birth, like my genuine birth story, was I could not wait. Be in labor, and I'm not trying to spiritually bypass and sound too positive when I say that. I genuinely mean that. I could not wait to be in labor and experience that as a woman, and I was so excited for that time. And you know how many people thought I was crazy for that and tried to tell me it really hurts? Like, now I've done it. We had a home birth, it was beautiful, and we job free. It doesn't matter, all births are perfect. But that was my, that was my birth. I know mm-hmm. that is the most intense thing you ever go through your life. In your whole entire life, and that's why men love adrenaline sport because they're never going to get to do that in their life. But my story, like I wasn't going to go into my birth following the fear that wasn't rewarding for me and my baby. And that's what we're doing every day in our lives. The same thing goes for when I when I was in I was finishing my book, the first three months of Soul's Life, so I had a newborn. The collective stories were, you can't finish a book with a newborn. That's crazy. Like, just all these people's stories. And I was like, no, no, here's my story. Wait a minute. Ready? Like, I've never been more inspired to finish this book because I literally have the next generation in my arms. And if that's not motivation to finish the book, I don't know what is. So you might think that my story needs to be, I'm so tired and depleted and I shouldn't be doing anything creative. My story is the complete opposite. I have the next generation in my arms. I'm going to finish this book because I've never been more inspired and energized than I am right now. And I was still breastfeeding all through the night. I was still breastfeeding all through the day. I was still running my businesses. I was still, you know, having my child get her teeth and fried on, you know, all the mum things. I was still having sleepless nights. I was still doing all the mum things. But my stories were more rewarding because I get to choose them. And so do you. So whether it's pregnancy, whether it's childhood, and again, I know that things happen in life that is out of our control. I'm not saying that there's not happening. Yes, sad things, tragic things, yes. But there's a lot of our life that we get to choose and we're not choosing. We're just borrowing stories from people around us or we're inheriting stories from our lineage. And when we're not really taking the the role of I am the creator of my stories and if I want my life to respond to me, I need to choose and be telling a different story from my body with my energy. It's the same with money, it's the same with business, it's the same with it's the same with it's the same with everything. So, um, my money story, and I had to, I had to constantly evolve it, but my money story is that I'm so implicitly impossible. By the earth, just go for like resources. And I know. So when I need to expand my income, if I do, sometimes I don't want to. I'm not going to do it. But if I can expand my income to sort of create more things, I can do it in alignment with me. And my money story is that money is my ticket for me to live my soul's purpose. It's not to be worshipped, it's to be appreciated. 
And for me, as long as I'm living in alignment with my with my alignment and my soul, and money is just my teammates, I don't need to explain to anyone what I do. So I want to encourage you to think, what is your money story like? What's your relationship with money? Do you appreciate it? Because a lot of the time, and in my book, I go through these three things. The first thing is to understand, like, what's your money story? Where did it come from? A lot of people will be like, oh, my God, my parents said this about money. My close friends said this about money. And you're like, oh, my God, I've made that my story. The second step is heal your relationship with money. I actually encourage people, and they do it, to write a love letter to money. Just apologize for all the times that you thought that it was money's fault, but it was actually yours. Your energy telling money. To behave exactly as it was in your life and that's not to say that you're wrong or anything it's just taking responsibility isn't life better when we realize that we are like choosing all the time so when i get people to write a love letter to money and i have mean my book will see that people like let it live in there it's like some people say i hated you i blamed you for everything you ruined my marriage you were you know i hate you were and all these things i just said let it out tell money everything you want to tell money and then ask yourself was it ever really money's fault? Or was I just literally instructing money to behave that way in my life? So when you can take responsibility, you can create a new story about money. What's going to be a rewarding money story for you to tell? And again, it doesn't mean I really get rich, no, I deserve to be rich. It's, it's whatever feels in alignment with your soul. It's got to be a click or it just doesn't work. So it could be that I... My thriving and my well-being is a gift to my community and my family and my planet. And so I live in like a great partnership with money. Money is always there for me when I need it, but I'm never greedy with it. Like I'm, I'm living in perfect alignment with money. And that is to whatever degree I require to live in my sober life. So I'm more, I'm less. It's just straight up alignment. Money, it doesn't judge anybody. Humans judge money. And then they wonder why money doesn't ever really come to their house. And all they do is like talk bad about it. Like, no, I'm going to And then think about this. Like, when was the last time that you actually stopped? It's crazy to me when people in there were marketing their life. I'm only cycling 10 times. I'm like, hold up a minute. Do you know what that means? Like, do you know what that means? Do you think money is going to want to come to you in greater amounts if you're not appreciating it in your life? Money is an energy and it will do what energies do. It will go where it's appreciated and it won't go where it's not appreciated. So if you want money to start playing a more rewarding role in your life, appreciate it a little bit more. Say thank you for your Wi-Fi. Say thank you for your event ticket. Say thank you for the food you eat. Say, say thank you for the hot water. Say thank you for your cycle and mean it. Otherwise, don't be surprised that money is going to want to go and visit more appreciative people. It's just never judgmental. It's an energy, right? It's a story first. So if you do anything urgently after here, to upgrade your story around network marketing, upgrade your story around isogenics. Some of you might have a story about, like you're embarrassed of isogenics. Maybe your story is that now I've gone beyond it now, like I've just, you know. Where is your story instructing your life? Like, how can you re-click? So I want, like, when you leave here, you can't do it now. It's like, it, it, and this is not homework for tonight or MRP, but this is like, you have to sit with this and really write it. Like, what is my story like? From like, if I was to create the story I was telling about network marketing, that was really rewarding for me. And if life was going to respond to that, what would I say? The same with money. The same with your team. If your story is like, think about the natural words out of your mouth. That's your story. Yeah, it could be this. Yeah, my team is good. They just don't do anything, but. And then you're like wondering why the team's good, but they don't do anything, but like, duh, because it's always going to be the perfect match. My team is thriving. I'm loving attracting new people. It's feeling better and better and better. I love that I'm like clicked with isogenics now. I went through like a few things, but I'm feeling more powerful, more in alignment, more grateful than isogenics than ever. And my business is thriving because of it. It's these, you've got to take responsibility. I can literally like, you read these speech all day long because I like, and always creating my own stories because life is literally a game of like I feel like I'm walking around with like a tape turn together, but like swatting stories away that I don't want. People, well, haven't you thought of this bit? Why aren't you going to do this bit? Well, you can't do this bit. Well, that's a big crazy bit. I'm saying it's not my story. One of the top three words out of my mouth, I was going, that's not my story. That's all it is, but I just shortened that to not my story. It's not my story. 
that's just not my story. My soul is telling a different story and I'm not going to borrow that. No matter how uncomfortable it is for me to have a different story than you, it's not from a place of better than now. It's from a place of alignment. And that is literally the key to life. So upgrade your stories now. Like, how much your story is going to be? Because, like I said, your action can be so lit. Like, you can be like, hey, I'm doing 25 direct calls. But if your stories are still telling that there were marketing sucks, the Paris of the team, your team aren't doing it, money isn't there, but all this stuff, then do you think like you're giving your business the best shot? Energy matters. And you don't have to be really to believe that. Like, you're just looking your life. The evidence is everywhere. So, just one I just, I just really, I mean, I'm going to read, I'm going to read you. So I actually wrote for you a, a script. And if you've ever done any of my work, uh, with any of my events, you know, then you would know that I'm very big on scripting, not scripting live, obviously, because I don't have to script like talking over it, but reading something every morning and night that is upgrading your stories that you're telling about the world. And I'm so big on it because we have to do conscious work on this because we've spent lifetime borrowing, borrowing and inheriting stories that aren't ours and wondering why this keeps happening to me. And when you can 100% take responsibility for the fact that life is only responding to your stories. That's the way it goes. And like I said, yes, our soul has other plans. Yes, there's soul infrastructure. Yes, there's stuff has gone back control, but a lot of it is our choice. So the reason I'm so big on this, and I wrote this for you, so I don't want you to think this is my, um, the one that I read at home or anything like that, although Eric and I do have ours. This is one that I wrote specifically for you, and it's gonna be on the app, so you can read it every morning and every night and upgrade your story. But I encourage you, because you're the creator, to put in whatever you want, you know what I mean? Get creative, with this. have fun with this and read it every morning and every night for 90 days. And there's gonna be like 80% of you don't. But I guarantee you that if you upgrade your story, put it on paper, read it every morning and every night, it will go into your body and you will embody a new story about life, about isogenics, about money, about your family, about your team, and everything is gonna change. I dare you, I just dare you to try it. So, My main question before I read this is this one next slide. What energy do I want to be? Because when you leave here, it's not just your action. Your action is very important, but it's not just your action. It's your energy. And you know that. Do you really know that? So I'm going to read you the script that I wrote for you. It's going to be in your app, but you can upgrade it to whatever feels good for you. This is my So. I feel better than ever about my isogenics training. Wow, it's crazy how quickly everything can change. And can you just close your eyes on me? I want to go I feel better than ever about my isogenics training. Wow, it's crazy how quickly everything can change. I feel completely brand new in union with this company, and I'm operating in a brand new energy. I'm so grateful for the permission to evolve how isogenics fits into my life as I as a human evolve. I know that isogenics wants to serve, nourish, and give excitement and breath to my life. I want nothing more than for me to feel aligned here. I love the new energy I feel when I take responsibility for choosing my experience with isogenics. It's like marriage. Always demanding new energy, new approach, new fun, and conscious work in order to keep the spark alive. Now that I know that, things are heating up and I'm feeling better than ever. I'm having so much fun getting creative with my business and behaving like an entrepreneur who has the support of a billion dollar company. Seriously, how cool is that? I'm attracting new people who I'm so excited to work with and who breathe new energy and freshness into my business and my life. It's crazy how differently the world responds to me and I change my energy. My income is growing exponentially in alignment with my soul. I'm sharing isogenics effortlessly and beautifully. Isogenics is supporting all of my passion in life in a way that feels very easy. My team are thriving. We all are down on them. People are rank advancing left, right, and center. And Isogenics Australia and New Zealand is well and truly a momentum again. 
This time, it's even more fun because we bring up the immaturity and elegance. I've found my click. I feel more aligned than ever. I feel like I have more energy than ever, and my isogenics business is thriving more than ever. So is the rest of my life. And that's really what isogenics wanted to give to me all along. I just needed to take responsibility for my part. Every day I remember why I started isogenics. I remind myself that this company and community always has my back through all of life's ups and downs and the times where we need to just take a breath. I trust isogenics to evolve and I trust myself to make my life my highest priority so this can always feel fun, fresh and exciting and so that I can always give my best to myself, my team, my family and to our friends. And most importantly, so that I can make a bigger than ever impact in the I was again many better than this. That's it. I'm all done. <laughs> all right, wait, we have to do a boomerang. I want to do the world's largest boomerang that's ever been done and put it on against world record. But seriously, ready? Ready? No, this is just fun. Ready? Just move. Go. How good. All right. I love you guys so much. And I just want you to know that it's getting really exciting here. And you've just got to take responsibility for your energy and just trust that on the corporate side, things are really, really exciting.